There's a lot of confusion and misunderstanding out there about engine braking. So today on RevZilla, I'll explain what engine braking is, how it works, and whether it's a bad thing or perhaps even a good thing. Let's open up the shop manual. Okay, so engine braking. Engine braking is the process by which you close the throttle and you allow drag in the engine to slow the motorcycle down. Here's how it works. When you're rolling down the road and the throttle is open, the throttle bodies, which are behind the cylinder here, are also wide open. So fuel and air easily passes into the cylinder as the piston moves down on the intake stroke. That can be a little abstract, so uh, why don't I give you guys an example of what that actually looks like. All right, so this is a throttle body. Granted, it's only one, it's off a single cylinder engine, and the MT-09 here obviously is a triple, so it would have three of these, but you get the point. When the throttle is open, you've got a nice wide open bore. Obviously, the fuel and air is going to pass through that easily, but when you close the throttle, that throttle plate snaps closed, but the piston is still trying to do its thing. It's still moving down in the intake stroke, still trying to pull air and fuel into the cylinder, but it can't because it's doing it against a closed tube. So you get a lot of intake vacuum, and that vacuum puts drag on the piston, which slows it down, and that in turn slows down the rear wheel. So the big question is, is it bad for your engine? And the answer is no, not in the slightest. I can understand where the concern comes from though, right? Because engine braking makes the motor sound strained, but unless you have downshifted to a gear that's going to cause the motor to rev up into the red line, no harm is being done. The first area of concern is a lack of lubrication. However, when you're engine braking, it is the throttle plates that are closed. It's not the oil pump that has been shut off. It's still operating. It is still pushing oil through the filter, still distributing oil to the piston, to the cam in the top end, to the transmission in the clutch. There is plenty of lubricating oil being distributed around an engine. So with a four stroke anyway, lack of lubrication, not an issue. Ah, but what about a two stroke where the lubricating oil is mixed into the gas? When your engine braking and the throttle is closed, you're not getting gas into the engine, so not enough lubrication, right? Eh, kind of. The fact is, there is plenty of residual oil in the engine to deal with a few moments of engine braking. The piston's not going to suffer, the crank's not going to suffer, everything is going to be fine. The only scenario I can potentially see engine braking with a two-stroke being a problem is when you are using it to control your speed during a long descent, like going down a miles-long mountain pass. Other than that, it's really not an issue. And I can tell you that this particular piston and crankshaft here has been subjected to lots of engine braking at the racetrack, and it's got no undue wear as a result. It just wore out from living a good life. Next up, engine overheating. Now, the MT-09 here has a very large radiator, and it's there to manage and dissipate the heat that this engine creates when it's being ridden at full throttle at high RPM. When you got the gas open, you're pouring a lot of fuel in the fire, lots of heat to deal with. When you're engine braking, there is little to no fuel being put on the fire, therefore there is less heat being created, so why wouldn't this cooling system be able to manage that? Less heat to manage, even though it is designed to deal with a lot of it. And frankly, it's the same scenario for an air-cooled bike. You're producing less heat from the engine while engine braking, yet air is still flowing over the cylinder, still drawing that heat away. So clearly, overheated engine as a result of engine braking, not an issue. And finally, there is the concern about clutch and or transmission damage. You'll see that those transmission gears are very robust, as is the clutch pack. And these components are designed to handle a lot of force. I mean, they're intended to deal with all of the torque of a full throttle start. So if they can handle that, why can't they handle a fraction of that force while engine braking? It's not an issue, and the clutch plates and transmission gears do not care which direction the force is coming from. Now, even if engine braking isn't bad for your engine, there is one drawback, and that is that if you're using it exclusively to slow down, it doesn't illuminate your brake light. So drivers behind you might not be aware that you're scrubbing speed. And as a rider that has been rear-ended on the freeway, I can tell you that it sucks. So I trigger the brakes and check my mirrors anytime I'm slowing down, even if I'm just using engine braking. Okay, so normal engine braking does not impart any undue harm or damage to the engine in any way. As a matter of fact, it can actually be beneficial. For starters, using engine vacuum to slow down instead of your brakes means that your brake discs and pads get a break. 
It is a small benefit, but it is a benefit nonetheless. And perhaps the most valuable use of engine braking is during long descents when it can prevent your brakes from overheating. If you open up your owner's manual, it probably even suggests using engine braking for that exact purpose. Then you've got track day riders and racers and sport riders who rely on engine braking to scrub speed as they go into a corner. And it also ensures that the engine is revved up and in the meat of the power when you roll on the gas, leaving the turn. So whether you've been wondering if engine braking is bad for your bike, or perhaps you weren't even aware of what engine braking is, now you know that it is safe and it is a useful way to slow down your motorcycle.